music, really. I mean, that's, that's what this whole place is about. Like, I mean, Ed's, you can look at digs for days. He's, he's got so much music, and every time, like, we're done playing, just like, hey, look what he's got here, look what he's got here. And then you go back and listen to that music, and then you apply it to something new that you might bring back to integrity. Mm. It, just, it, it's a, it was a cycle. Sure. Um, yeah, I really, I've always really enjoyed playing here, even though I haven't been necessarily a part of the Hartford scene for like a long time. But um, every time I've come here to play on other people's gigs, it's been such a wonderful atmosphere. The people really love the music. That has been so instrumental in my really giving people a place to play on the platform. And also, I think there's like maybe 10, 15 CDs in my car and all of them are from this spot <laughs> right here. <laughs> I've learned so much from just like hanging at this place and coming here, checking stuff out. Really unparalleled. Yeah, this, uh, this place is special. You know, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm a Philadelphia musician and the first time I walked in here, I knew that there was uh, a different energy about this place and about the people that are here. Like I just walked in and was sort of overwhelmed with something different and something I wasn't used to uh, actually in, in a space. Uh, somewhere where everyone can be selfless, people can enjoy real art, um, both through records and CDs and through music. And, and that's something that's extremely special that um, is lost, you know, and this is gonna hurt. For somebody who's only played here a couple times with Andrew Wilcox, it's it, it it's sad and, and I'm I'm you know but um, I could tell just from everyone's love of this place that it's it's um, special. So I'm I'm sad to see it go but um, I'm thankful for it. Let's get this um, Andrew Hello Oh, right? <laughs> yeah. 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 I was trying to get you, man. Where are you going? I was trying to, I was trying, I was trying to get a good lineup on YouTube. Yeah. Oh, 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 oh. You're doing some interviews, right? Yeah. I, 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 okay. Okay. We're going to talk to Andrew, I think, probably for a brief moment uh, okay. at the end and whatnot. So, and then we're putting uh, two like tribute concerts together. And I really appreciate you all coming out. I, I think a lot of people know, but we're going to be closing at the end of the year, closing the store. But we still will have live jazz on January 4th with Sarah Hanahan, Quiltet, and January 11th, hopefully, in all uh, Integrity Music All Stars. We'll have a going out of business sale starting January 2nd. So we're going to be here for another month, I guess you might say. But anyway, without any further, I'd like to introduce the band. Thank you. Yeah. Our bass, Conway Campbell Jr. Yeah. The local saxophone, Dakota Austin. Elliot Bill. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Dr. Walker on tenor sax. Yeah. And the leader, Andrew Wilcox. Yeah.
to know about the origins of the store because I know 1972 was the first year in business yeah. but what prompted you to open well, the store? Uh, I was working at Travelers and a, 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 a fellow like Carl Sherm and I he became, we were friends and we started talking about music or whatever about and anyway, we were both computer programmers and with wow. long hair and beards, and we didn't necessarily fit in at Travelers. But anyway, in February is when we decided, and we went and rented 800 silo steam mm -hmm. for $175, and May the 5th is when we opened the store. Mm -hmm. And that was the, we, we had, I'd quit, we both quit Travelers. By the time we got to Christmas, or in November, December, we realized that we were going to make it. Yeah. Your partner and you were both hippies of a, of a sort, in, in, a, a, sense, in a way. In a sense, in a way. But, but I was into jazz, mm -hmm. and he was into rock. Gotcha. Words, when we opened the store, he yep. wanted to play Steely Dan and, and Grateful Dead. Uh -huh. And and we played a lot of rock, I must say, at the beginning. But I probably, played, we had jazz. If you look at that photo there, you can see there's some of those two pictures of two seat, uh, two record sets of mm -hmm. like Gene Ammons, you know, on Prestige, those yeah. two record sets they had back in the 70s. Yeah. We had that. We, we ordered all of that, so we ordered. We had jazz. Mm -hmm. I started off with listening to R&B. Mm -hmm. The Flamingos was one of the first records that I bought nice. in South Bend, Indiana, at the Al Smith Record Bar, and uh, and they had that's back in the days when new records were like a dollar ninety nine, dollar seven sixty nine, sure. and every all the records were open, so they weren't seats, you know, used. There were used records, yes, but they. But anyway. Uh, but I was into R&B, but, but I, I slowly got into jazz, mm -hmm. and, and by the time I was in, you know, second year of high school, third year, I was, I was uh, that jazz was my thing. Now, how long was Carl involved in he the was, business? He was with us for four years. Gotcha. We were together, and then he, uh, he decided to, to leave anyway, mm -hmm. and so then it, that was mine, and that was, and then one more year, and then we moved up here and went to, to a place about twice, almost two and a half times as large as we had when we started. Mm -hmm. And we, we didn't take me more than a couple of years, or even probably a year to fill it up mm -hmm. right away. And we were full, yeah. you know, like, like the pictures down there of our 30th anniversary, that was upstairs, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. And you can see, just by looking at it when they were there, just how big it is. We had t-shirts hanging from the, you know, all those shirts from New Orleans, the gear ink. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and the pictures of all Paul Brown was it was there. And, yep. Um, that was a great thing. Anyway. Because I remember when I first came here, it would have been I want to say like January of '03, and you were still upstairs. Because the move, if I'm not mistaken, was it '03 or '04? Yeah, pretty close to that. I yeah. don't even know if we say it on there. It, from from what I remember, it mm -hmm. it was we were. I see we were down there for five years, mm -hmm. and then we were here for 20, from what I know, that was the 30th anniversary, not too long after that concert, mm -hmm. 72, yeah, maybe 03 would have been the year I, uh, we, 
uh, we moved down. They moved us down here because the building was sold, and the salon took it over, mm -hmm. and they wanted to redo where we were. Yeah. So I, I could either they need to fix this up for me, or they would, uh, and I'd have to find another place. Right. So I said, okay, I'll take it down here. The records were just unbelievable. Mm -hmm. People bringing in used records, uh, DJs bringing in promos. Uh, I had a very good friend who was a DJ in in uh, did a radio show in New York, and and he, he had guys, friends of his, who come up here and, and sell their records to me. Nice. And then I just advanced more and more, mm -hmm. you know. And this is also, I tell everybody, this is when uh, we'll, William Grower Enterprises went out of business. And yeah. William Grower Enterprises had Prestige Riverside, which later Fantasy bought all of it. But anyway, they went out of business and they had records, in, not necessarily record stores, but they had them in like a place like Shoppers Fair. We had them in South Bend, and maybe like a Kmart. Mm -hmm. These, and they had them for like 69 cents, 99 cents, wow. and it was all jazz. Mm -hmm. And so I started picking them up, picking them up. Mm -hmm. You know, picking names that I didn't know. Mm -hmm. And then there were some that I wish that I would have, could, you know, didn't realize who they were, but I was slowly getting into them. Right. I went to about five different places in, you know, one near Philadelphia, Long Island, mm -hmm. Albany. These were all big warehouses, and they were distributors, but they, this was back in the day when they were starting to distribute. Uh, they had too many records, so they were making cutouts. Oh, okay. They were, they were cut the little corner. And I was buying them for two dollars and selling them for three ninety nine. Wow. All sealed and jazz like unbelievable. That's awesome. And then, and then the, and then the promos and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. uh, it was it was great. At this point, you know, having been in business forty eight years and been such a vital part of the music community in this area, you know, certainly within the jazz idiom. How how do you reflect on the people that you've met and the experiences well, that you've I, had? I, you know, highly, highly, you know, re highly respect, especially all the, the young fellas that played came from heart. Mm -hmm. On our 25th anniversary, we, we had live music. We had Jimmy Green, mm -hmm. and he had just graduated. He was here with Wayne Escoffery, mm. two of them. I called them the Twin Towers. Yeah, Jackie McLean wrote a tune for them that he never recorded called the Twin, Twin Towers. Towers. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, oh, one other little thing, when uh, uh, Steve and Nat used to come in back when they were, when the school actually had the CDs for the kids to, to listen to. In the Allen Library, yep. And they would come in and pick out a bunch of them, and Jackie was with them, and Jackie and I were talking, and then Jackie would say, make sure you get all the Jackie McLean CDs. You know, <laughs> I've told this to everybody. But, you know, he was joking but he was you know. right there was a grain of truth there too definitely in terms of when you initially started this business in 1972 and if you think about what your initial goal was did you ever imagine that basically a half century later you would still be entrenched in this community in the way that you are and have been i, I i'm certain and i never thought of that and i, I never thought of of you know, I I I I love my jazz and I appreciate it, but I never thought it would really, 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 really be a, a major thing and and for for quite a while for the store. Mm -hmm. And then the fact that we would have live jazz almost two or three times a week, mm -hmm. a, a month, I should say, mm -hmm. I would have, I never thought of any of that mm -hmm. really, or even having live music. Yeah, uh, I enjoy so much the live music that we've had from the Heart Students, mm -hmm. from photos of. You in 2006. Oh yeah, yep. Photo in the six. You were like a freshman or a second semester. Yeah, that yeah. was either my second or third semester. Yeah. And I remember I always tell everybody, yeah, he was up there playing. He's and your your folks brought in all the food, the cookies and stuff. Mm -hmm. And and you said you can't eat any food till we're done playing. Yeah, 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 yeah. I was very adamant about that. I mean, the people who have played here over the years and what it's meant for all of us in our development and to have. Just an environment what, that supports the music. What it's meant for the store, mm -hmm. too. It's Integrity Music Jazz Store is what I would love to be called, okay? Mm -hmm. But with this music, that really brings it out. Right. And, and with, the, with the, the young men and women, mm -hmm. I should say. Yeah, totally. <laughs> totally. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's been been a pleasure. Yeah. It's really been a pleasure. And, and I, as I tell everybody, 
I have hardly ever seen a group play here that wasn't up to a certain level. Right. Really. Right. There was nobody that was. You know, what are they? You know, I don't think I can. I can't think of any. No. Ever. No. Ever. I think people know that if you're playing here, the audience that you're going to get is going to consist of educated listeners, yeah. yes. people who know what they're listening to, and so you really need to make sure that you bring your A game. And I think that you know, for young students, whether they be hard school students mm -hmm. or high school students from you know the Greater Hartford Academy of the Arts or any of the other area schools that have strong jazz programs, it's again that idea of a rite of passage where you're in an environment that really embraces the music yep. that has a certain energy and ambiance around it. Wonderful that we had all the people that are supportive of jazz. Yeah. And, uh, and some coming from, you know, coming from uh, other areas. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. It was a, a wonderful pleasure of, of putting, you know, people accepting the jazz and, and especially with the live jazz and the people who come here yeah. to see it. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for out. Uh, Ed Crack in Integrity and Music has helped me build the sound I have now and uh, gotten to me to have the opportunities I've had because I was given the chance to play in the store. He gave me the chance to come here, play my original music, and builds what I've gotten to now. You know, I would not be where I am without Ed Crack. So please give a hand to Ed Crack and please have you yeah. I mean, it's amazing just to have a brick and mortar business like this, which is independently owned and that specializes in jazz yeah. to be around almost into 2020, into 2020. Yeah. That's unheard of. I mean, it, it really is. Like, I mean, I've said to a few people recently, there are a few record stores, record stores generally, that have been around for that amount of time, but none that I can think of that specialize in jazz. None. You know, so it really, really is amazing. And I hope that you understand how impactful and vital this business has been to the community in this area, you know, and how grateful we all are. like Integrity in Music was for all of those aforementioned musicians in addition yeah. to a litany of others, the legacy and the mission of this business will live on for quite some time to yeah. come because um, of the people that were impacted by it yeah, and the I lessons hope, that they took away. I hope I'm, hope I'm around for a, for a while, while, long, long, long while. Yeah. And that I can still you know, appreciate uh, appreciate the music and what goes on in it in the, in this town. And, totally. In in Hartford, I should say. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm.
work somewhere. Nice. Somewhere. I, you know, do that. I got to ride my bike every day. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I got to go to New Orleans yeah. for, the, for the French Quarter Fest and yes. mm -hmm. our trips and so forth. But uh, yeah. And I got to get got to get my another trumpet from the after and see if I can get back to playing. to do it without what you've yeah, provided us with because I'll tell you Ed I mean one kind of like final thought at least from me um, and again I go back to Paul Brown and I go back to you know Jimmy Green and then certainly to Steve Davis and Nat Reeves who were mentors of mine later um, they constantly all reiterated the fact that the answers to any question that I might ever have about the music were in the recordings. And so were it not for a place such as Integrity in Music well, that's for pretty, me to get the source. That's pretty that's pretty good, I must say. That's that's a great, great statement. Mm. The answer they're telling you the answers is in the music. Mm -hmm. You're the key holder. You are. <laughs> <laughs> oh shoot. I wish I could only thing is I wish I could play the music. Hey, I'm telling you, Ed, that resurgence, man, that's going to be the next career that you have is going to be as a performer. Uh, everybody says that. Awesome. 